The Gay Bomb. Imagine a battlefield where the weapons are not designed to kill, but to confuse and distract. In the mid-90s, the United States Air Force's Wright Laboratory in Ohio came up with a concept that seems straight out of a science fiction novel. They proposed a non-lethal psychochemical weapon, a bomb that would release sex pheromones over enemy forces. The intent? To generate mutual sexual attraction among soldiers, leading to a breakdown in unit cohesion and combat effectiveness. This idea, which was never put into action, was part of a series of proposals for non-lethal chemical weapons. The aim was to debilitate and distract opponents without causing physical harm. The gay bomb was speculated to contain a strong aphrodisiac that would induce homosexual behavior among troops, leading to a distasteful but completely non-lethal impact on morale. The concept of using sex pheromones as a weapon is based on the premise that certain chemicals can influence human behavior. However, no scientific studies have conclusively proven that pheromones can cause rapid behavioral changes in humans. Despite this, the idea persisted in various forms. Including proposals for bombs that would cause heavy sweating, flatulence, or severe halitosis. The gay bomb proposal may sound ludicrous, and it certainly raised eyebrows when it was leaked to the public. It even earned the Wright Laboratory an Ig Nobel Prize, a parody award for unusual or trivial achievements in scientific research one. But beyond the humor, it opens up a serious conversation about the ethics of warfare and the lengths to which military research will go to gain an advantage. As we reflect on this piece of history, let's consider the implications of such ideas. What does it say about our approach to conflict resolution? How do we balance the desire to minimize casualties with the potential for psychological warfare? And most importantly, how do we ensure that our pursuit of military innovation remains within the bounds of ethical conduct? Thank you for joining me in this exploration of one of the most bizarre chapters in military research. Let's continue to question, to learn, and to strive for a world where the tools of war become relics of the past.